Today, we're trying something new. This will be the first episode of a new series called Disregarded Duos. This series will only be looking at the player's time spent together to take an in-depth look into their success or lack thereof. Disregarded Duos will look at former player tandems that don't get the same recognition as a Jordan and Pippen or Shaq and Kobe. Again, this will be due to reasons such as small market teams, lack of success, or conflict among one or both of the players. Today's episode will have all three of these reasons, as we look at the 1980s Dallas Mavericks duo of Mark Aguirre and Rolando Blackman, two elite scorers who provided the Mavericks with lethal firepower on the wings for nearly a decade. Unfortunately, their time together was littered with drama and underachievement, but we'll get into that. So let's remember this disregarded duo. The 1981 season was the Dallas Mavericks' inaugural season. The team had drafted UCLA's Kiki Vandaway to be their first franchise cornerstone. However, Vandaway refused to play for Dallas and held out for the entire offseason and first month of the regular season, until he was traded to Denver along with a first round pick without ever suiting up for the Mavs. In return, the Mavs received two future first round picks. The Mavericks had a predictably poor first season, finishing with the worst record in the league at 15 and 67. The silver lining of this finish would be the Mavs were awarded the first overall pick after winning a coin flip between them and the worst team in the East, the Detroit Pistons, who would subsequently receive the second overall pick. With the first overall pick, Dallas selected Mark Aguirre out of DePaul. This was a bit of a surprise to those around the league and to Aguirre himself, as Indiana point guard Isaiah Thomas was expected to be the number one choice. Aside from distinguishing Aguirre as the best player in the draft, it also appeared that the Mavericks were not worried about attitude issues that had plagued him in college. Aguirre was a 6'6", high-scoring small forward who had averaged about 24.5 points, 8 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game during his three years at DePaul, where he would lead the Blue Demons to an overall record of 79-10 and and three straight tournament appearances. Aguirre was widely regarded as a future franchise player for whoever drafted him. The Mavericks also had the ninth pick in the draft, which they had acquired in the Vandaway trade. They used the ninth pick to select 6'6 shooting guard Rolando Blackman out of Kansas State. In four years with the Wildcats, Blackman averaged around 15 points, 5 rebounds, and 2.5 and assists per game. The Wildcats made the tournament in both Blackman's junior and senior season, where he led the team in scoring both years. With this selection, Blackman became the first Panamanian-born player drafted to the NBA. The team also scooped up guard forward Jay Vincent with the 24th pick who was also a productive player for the Mavs, spending his first five seasons with the team. The 1982 season would see Aguirre deal with a chipped bone in his right foot about a month and a half into the season, as well as depression due to the injury and fines as a result, leading him to missing over 30 games and being out of shape from the time he entered into the league. Even though Aguirre only managed 51 games and 20 starts on the season, he would still show his elite level scoring even as a rookie as he managed to score 42 points in a loss to the Warriors on November 14th. Blackman was much more available in his rookie season and played a sixth man role for the Mavs as he appeared in all 82 games, starting 16 of them. It is also worth mentioning that Jay Vincent filled in great for the injured Aguirre and even took on the role of number one option when Aguirre returned as he played in 81 games averaging over 21 points and having his own 40 plus point game when he went for 41 versus the Kings during the season. The DePaul Aguirre may have reacted poorly to this, but the Mavericks Aguirre later said he saw it as a test to play his role and put the team first. But the Mavs were still a young and developing team and organization, so they only finished 28 and 54 and missed the playoffs. However, this was still a 13 game improvement from the previous season. The duo's rookie year saw Blackman average around 13 points, three boards and one assist per game while Aguirre averaged close to 19 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. Not bad for a player who admitted he wasn't really trying to improve in his rookie year. The 1983 season began with optimism for the Mavs, as they would be above 500 at the All-Star break with a 25-24 and 24 record, but they could not sustain the momentum and finish the season 38-44, and 44, missing the playoffs. But once again, they had made a step forward by winning 10 more games in the previous year. Aguirre stayed healthy this season and showed why he was the number one pick, as his 24.4 points were good for 6th in the NBA. This would start a 6 season streak in which Aguirre averaged 22 plus points per game. Blackman would also see his role increase as he became a starter, raised his scoring average by 4 points, and finished 3rd on the team in scoring behind Aguirre and Vincent. The Mavericks were a team on the rise, 
and Blackman and Aguirre were leading the charge to the tune of around 18 points, 4 rebounds, and 2.5 assists for Blackman, and 24.5 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists from Aguirre. The 1984 season saw Blackman, Aguirre, and the Mavs finally reach the next level. This year saw the team draft future franchise legend Derek Harper and Jay Vincent be reduced to a bench roll. But Blackman and Aguirre showed their evolution and both put up career high scoring averages, with Aguirre being second in the league behind Adrian Dantley's 30.6 points per game. The team started the year 13-4, including an 8-0 home record. Aguirre would receive his first All-Star selection and be the first All-Star in Mavs history. Dallas would finish the year with their first winning record at 43-39, which was good for fourth in the West. Aguirre and head coach Dick Mata would also start seeing eye to eye after some early year frustrations from the no-nonsense Mata toward the sometimes erratic and unpredictable Aguirre. The Mavs would take on Gus Williams, Jack Sigma, and the Seattle Supersonics in the first round. Aguirre and Blackman played great in the first round, as they both scored over 24 points per game. Aguirre also pulled down over 10 rebounds per game, and Blackman shot over 51% from the field in a five-game series win. They drew the Showtime Lakers in the second round, and even though both Aguirre and Blackman would shoot at least 50%, they were no match for the talent and experience of the Lakers, and lost in 5 as Aguirre saw his scoring average drop almost 7 points from his round 1 averages. For the season, Blackman averaged about 22.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game, while Aguirre averaged about 29.5 points, 6 rebounds, and 4.5 assists per game. The 1985 season saw the Mavericks once again make an improvement on their record and finish 44-38. and Aguirre and Blackman would again be the team's top scorers as the Mavs made the playoffs for the second consecutive year. This season would also see Aguirre score a career-high 49 points in a January 25th win versus the Sixers. In a four-game series loss to former draft pick Kiki Vandeweghe and the Portland Trail Blazers in the first round of the playoffs, Blackman, who would make his first All-Star team this season, would play out of his mind with a 43-point Game 1 and a 41-point Game 2, where he would score 14 straight Mavs points at one point. Blackman would cool down a bit in Game 3, only scoring 30, and then had an awful Game 4 in which he scored 17 points on 2 of 13 shooting. Overall, Blackman would average almost 33 points on 51% shooting, while Aguirre contributed 29 on near 50% shooting. For the season, Blackman would have averages of nearly 20 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game, while Aguirre would average around 26 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. The 86 season looked like it could be special for the Mavericks. Second year forward Sam Perkins had shown his talent in the previous year's playoffs, where he averaged almost 19 points a game, while Derek Harper was also earning a bigger role. Additionally, defensive center James Donaldson was added to the team. Even though Aguirre would post his second lowest scoring average of his career during this season, the Mavs would still finish 44-38. and 38. The emergence of Perkins and Harper gave the Mavs more scoring options, which likely contributed to the drop in Aguirre's averages. But Blackman would continue his consistent play and earn his second straight All-Star selection, while also scoring a career-high 46 points in a March 12th loss to Sacramento. However, Aguirre's conflicts with head coach Dick Mata continued, as he benched Aguirre in a December 20th game versus Atlanta for coming to the aid of fellow player and friend Dominique Wilkins. And then, Aguirre would refuse to re-enter the game due to the reason for being benched. At this point, it seemed that the issues were further than Aguirre's maturity or modest strictness. Perhaps the issues were more around conflicting values or morals. Nonetheless, the Mavs made it to the playoffs, where they would beat the Jazz in the first round from a great all-round showing that saw five Mavs average double digits for the series. The Showtime Lakers ended their season for the second time in three years even though the Mavs had six players averaging double digits, with Blackman and Aguirre both averaging over 20 points, including 27.2 from Aguirre. Blackman finished the year averaging about 21.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game, while Aguirre averaged about 22.5 points, 6 boards, and 4.5 assists. At this point, the Mavs didn't have any more excuses. They had two of the best players in the league, were a perennial playoff team, but seemed to be playoff underachievers. And look who's in the news again. Mata and Aguirre having their disagreements over the years was pretty common, but they usually made up. Although this one was different. In a 1987 game against the Pistons, Aguirre would argue with the refs over some missed calls. But when he was told by Mata to remain calm, he instead responded by arguing with the refs more, resulting in an ejection right before halftime, which spilled into the locker room, where Mata would berate Aguirre reportedly calling him a coward and a quitter. But here's where things are different. 
one of Aguirre's teammates and good friends on the team, Derek Harper, was so upset at Aguirre's lack of control that he shoved Aguirre and called him a jerk as he left the court. Probably because this was an important game. The Mavs were having their most successful season and were fighting for the best playoff position. Ultimately, they would finish the season 55-27, and 27, which was good for second in the West. The Mavs had two All-Stars, as Blacken was voted to his third straight All-Star game, and Aguirre made the team for the first time since 1984. Blackman would also memorably hit game-tying free throws to send the 87 All-Star game into overtime. The Mavs would run into Seattle in the first round of the playoffs and lose in four. Aguirre and Blackman continued their efficient playoff scoring to the tune of 23.5 and 21.3 points, respectively. But they couldn't stop the Sonics' unexpected big three of Dale Ellis, Tom Chambers, and Xavier McDaniel, as they averaged a combined 76.8 points throughout the four games. Another year, another early playoff exit for the Mavs. Aguirre and Blackman were in the prime of their careers, but the Mavs seemed like they had peaked. The duo's contributions remained predictable and reliable, as Blackman put up averages of around 21 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 3 assists per game, while Aguirre added close to 26 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. The 1988 season can be seen as the final act for the Aguirre and Blackman-led Mavs, and they did not disappoint. And why might this be? Well, it's probably not the only reason, but Mavs head coach Dick Mata retired and was replaced by John McLeod. And it seemed that Aguirre was more free to be himself in a November 1st game, in which similarly to the 1985 game versus the Hawks, Aguirre went to check on the Nuggets TR Dunn after clipping him in the face. However, after this time, Aguirre would not be met with glares, criticisms, or benchings. Aguirre had only positive things to say about his new head coach, as he felt that he finally had someone who was on his side, as he would say. I'm not even concerned about those blow-ups happening anymore, because they won't. Not with John McLeod. Now I've got a coach who's behind me, instead of one who is looking for something to hang over my head every day. The Mavs had arguably their best rotation in history, with Aguirre and Blackman leading the team, Derek Harper, Sam Perkins, and James Donaldson making up the rest of the starting lineup, and second-year forward Roy Tarpley providing a big boost off the bench. Tarpley really could have been something special, but unfortunately, addiction issues derailed a very promising career. The Mavs finished 53-29 and and beat the Rockets in four games in the first round in a series that didn't see Blackman finish as a top two scorer, as Tarpley averaged a full point more than Blackman. Round two against the Nuggets now saw Aguirre not finish as a top two scorer, as Blackman led the Mavs for the series and Tarpley was again second, finishing with two points more per game than Aguirre in a Mavs series win. Then came yet another playoff matchup with the LA Lakers. It saw the Mavs push the Lakers to seven games before succumbing in what was their most successful season in franchise history. Blackman would finish with his lowest playoff scoring average of his entire Dallas career at 18.1 points per game, while Aguirre actually led the Mavs in scoring during the Lakers series with 24.7 points per game. However, Aguirre was accused of giving up on the Mavs in the series deciding Game 7, to which Aguirre has vehemently denied in a 2021 podcast appearance. The irony of this Mavs duo was that they were having their most success as their team became more complete, and they no longer had to carry the bulk of the scoring load. Blackman would finish the year averaging about 18.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game, while Aguirre averaged 25 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game, and was an all-star selection in what would be this duo's last full season together. The 1989 season began with both Aguirre and Blackman on the team, but Aguirre burned any bridges that he had left this season as he made an obscene gesture to the media and took himself out of the lineup during warm-ups before a game. Due to these reasons and the overall buildup of tension between Aguirre and the Mavs front office and players, Aguirre was traded to the Pistons for Adrian Dantley on February 16, 1989, with James Donaldson welcoming the trade, saying, We were ready to get somebody that would come in here and play hard every night. Mark would just loaf around and not give good effort in some games. In his 44 games with the Mavs in the 89 season, Aguirre would average around 22 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists per game, while Blackman averaged around 20 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists for his full season in Dallas. And the duo was done, as Aguirre would go on to play a reserve role free of drama and win back-to-back -back titles with the Bad Boy Pistons before finishing his career in 1994 with the Clippers, while Blackman would remain a Maverick for three more seasons, becoming the franchise scoring leader until Dirk, before he finished his career with New York. Overall, this duo is one of a few 80 scoring tandems that don't really get talked about. They brought an expansion team from the depths of the NBA to a conference finals appearance. Their ability to score anywhere on the floor made them a nightmare to defend on the wings. This video definitely looked a lot more at Aguirre, but that's because he was the one that was outspoken, had a bit of a negative reputation from the moment he entered the league, 
and was the focus of the media due to his prestige and status as the Mavs' first franchise player. This allowed Blackman to fly under the radar, but even without Aguirre, this probably still would have been the case, as Blackman was never in negative headlines or getting in conflicts, and his lack of ego likely made him one of the few players that were good enough to be a number one option, but could play in Aguirre's shadow with minor issue. What I find most impressive about these two is their scoring efficiency, as during their time in Dallas, they both averaged over 49% shooting in both the regular season and the playoffs. And as so many major sports expansion teams and leagues have come and gone, it's evident how difficult it is to retain interest. But Rolando Blackman and Mark Aguirre excited and satisfied fans for nearly a decade. Thanks for watching Disregarded Duos. I hope it helped give you a new appreciation for such a great tandem. We'll see you next time.